I got to Tucson in the early 80s. I was unemployed. I'd been laid off from a uh, steel foundry in Phoenix, Capital Castings. And I moved to Tucson and uh, started looking for work. I heard they were hiring at uh, Hughes Aircraft, but you had to have soldering experience. And so I, I took some classes uh, through uh, Pima in soldering and applied and I was hired. I uh, applied at Hughes because I was a political activist since my college years and I wanted to work in the labor movement and I knew they had a union at Hughes, the machinist union, so I wanted to work with the machinist union. And that's when I got to uh, Tucson in the early 80s. At Raytheon I was an assembler for many years, then I took some more classes and uh, worked myself into a uh, technician job uh, working uh, at Hughes uh, on several missile product lines. I was aware that there were some contamination issues, but they really didn't take hold uh, in my consciousness. It, it didn't seem something really uh, big or important or captivating. But I worked with someone at Raytheon. Her name was Marie Sosa. She lived on Calle Evelina, and Marie would miss some work sometimes because she was ill, but she was just the sweetest person you could ever imagine. And when she came back, uh, I really enjoyed working her, with her. She was just great company. And she would mention the contamination at times, and I didn't continue to not pay much attention. I r heard peripherally that there was some contamination, that uh, Hughes Aircraft was primarily responsible and uh, then she'd miss work again and come back and talk about the different surgeries that she was having. Um, one breast was removed, then she'd come back, another breast was removed, and finally I said, Marie, what the heck is going on? And then I, she kind of caught my attention because I liked her, I'd gotten to really value her friendship, and, and I was uh, concerned that she was having so, so many health problems, and not just her, she's Eventually, I, I learned that it wasn't just her. It was her husband who had uh, uh, some sort of uh, liver cancer, I believe. And uh, then she told me that everyone in her family had health problems. They thought it was the water. And she said even her dog died of cancer. And um, several people on her block, as a matter of fact, Gaia Valina, there was about 25 cases of cancer. So by then... I thought this this is, you know, why why isn't it on the front page? What what's going on here? This sounds like a terrible, you know, catastrophe that should be investigated. It's, it sounds like uh, somebody should be ringing an alarm and and bring you all kinds of help. And and she says no. You know there is there is no help. And uh, after that, I started paying close attention. And, but it wasn't until 1985 that a reporter from the Arizona Daily Star did an investigation and published a series of articles, a huge spread in the Arizona Daily Star. That was before the Star was owned by the conservative organization that owns it now. But they did an expose and they found out that uh, the wells that people had been drinking out of for, for many, many years this started in the 40s when uh, consolidated aircraft started demothballing airplanes that could be reused during the Korean War. So they used solvents like TCE and, and other uh, solvents, and then they just uh, flowed from their cleaning operations into arroyos, into unlined ponds, and percolated into the desert. And as early as the early 50s, 1950s, some uh, residents, nearby residents just across the highway from Old Nogales Highway started complaining that their wells were fouled and their animals were sick and they couldn't drink out of them. So they complained uh, and the uh, city of Tucson to placate them, hooked them up to city water, but didn't alert anyone that the aquifer was being contaminated, there was contaminating wells they just kind of shut them up. I think they gave them a couple of hundred dollars, and that was it. And the people 
took the money, they were hooked up to clean water, and that was it. That was in the 50s. But the contamination that started in the 40s continued to contaminate the aquifer in the 50s. 20 other residents of, of uh, the airport authority set up there, General Dynamics and, and uh, other companies that you used those solvents and continue to pollute the, the uh, desert and uh, continue to dump their hazardous waste in unlined pits and arroyos, and it continued to percolate into the aquifer for years from the late 40s through the 50s, through the 60s, through the 70s, and they say it stopped in the 70s, but I started working in uh, at Hughes in 1982, and I can say it did not stop because when I first started working there, I was degreasing some parts, and I said, what am I going to do with this? I had a container full, and they said, just open the door and dump it out. And I, I knew it wasn't the right thing to do, but I was a new employee, and not having any options, I did that, and then started thinking about this later. And I, I would see people dumping chemicals into the sewer, just down the sinks, in the laboratories. So I know that the contamination continued through the early 80s.